you play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Manic Monday. We have the first week of the football season being done in the books, so that's one week closer to the NFL season, and I'm going to say it's going to be a long, long, long off season. but the early takes of just hearing the stupidest shit have already begun. ESPN is literally having some crazy things. They literally said today that uh, Russell Wilson should sign with the Jets to back up Aaron Rodgers for $1 million. And they followed up with good old Bart Scott. Bart Scott! Bart Scott! You know, maybe he should be checked for CTE. Not to make light of CTE, but some of the things he says... Just don't hold water. I remember when he famously said, I'd let Dak Prescott walk and I'd take Teddy Bridgewater. You'd have a better team. Where's Teddy Bridgewater right now? He followed it up with another one like, I'd take Jameis Winston over Dak Prescott because he's never had anything like Dak Prescott has to work with. Uh, okay. All right. And now... He is setting his sights on Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons was talking about what D-Law said about being tired. Okay? And Micah Parsons really threw D-Law under the bus on there um, on that whole statement. But Bart Scott basically is trashing Micah Parsons and basically saying that um, he's lazy and, and so on. Let's go to the tape on this because it's just crazy. With Micah Parsons this year, no, sending him, do they let him go into next year uh, without the extension? Uh, and, we all land, and how much do they want to commit to him long term? I think those are the questions we have to answer about Micah Parsons. I'm not at all concerned about how well he will play. Why didn't y'all? Why didn't y'all produce me with the linebacker question? Because, because Rod, we had to get you. Were, how much better could you have been than you were on deck? Oh, that's true. There, there you, you go. go. Uh, by the way, Parsons <laughs> was on Stephen A. Smith's show over the weekend. He addressed we his teammates, Demarcus Lawrence's comments of the team being tired during their playoff loss. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I agree that teams play us like the Super Bowl. We are the Dallas Cowboys. But in the end, that's not a good enough reason or excuse to say that publicly. You should never go into a game like I'm tired, like I'm ready, like I'm ready to go home. Cause that's what's exactly gonna happen. And it did happen. That's part of culture and identity that I just feel like we're missing. Like, that's just something like I don't agree with at all. But as soon as playoffs hit, knowing how limited and how hard it is to win in playoff game, I wouldn't I wouldn't I would never say I'm tired or I I feel fatigued. So, yeah, he had an issue with Demarcus Lawrence saying that the team might have been a little fatigued when they took on Green Bay and that he said, hey, look, we're the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody plays us. It's like the Super Bowl. What does that mean? It's the playoffs. Everybody playing hard in the playoffs. This one I don't understand. Attitude reflect leadership, right? Attitude reflect leadership. Mm -hmm. Who's the leader on that team? They, they don't have one. Let's be honest. Well, it, it, is it my, that. Are, are you are you going to pay? No, 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 bro. I'm talking on that defensive side because that's who didn't show up. Like, I don't expect Dak to get in defensive players' face and say, not today. If you're going to be that generational player, if you're going to be that Lawrence Taylor player, like, listen, I played around great players that, you know, Michael Parsons is supposed to be that. Ray Lewis ain't letting no team show up and, put, and, and lay no dud. Ed Reed ain't letting no team show up and lay no dud. Darrell Reeves ain't showing up letting nobody play no, lay no dud. He's going to perform and play with such an energy that's going to make everybody else play. So that's what I'm talking about. He's lacking leadership. Right? He doesn't understand what winning in this league is all about. Is he a great player? Yes. 
But just because you're a great player don't mean you're a great leader. He needs to go to a leadership school and learn how to lead by example and quit talking so much and being so damn sensitive. You're a linebacker. That's supposed to be a tough guy spot. He's the most sensitive guy I've ever seen. He responds to everything. Get off of social media. Quit tweeting. Quit talking about responding and go about your business, man. That's how you change the culture. That's why Emmitt Smith came out and had something to say. That was directly to you, bro. So instead of responding to what uh, Lawrence said, respond to what Emmitt Smith said and maybe sit down with guys that know what winning is about in this league T, and take that you, to heart. You've run teams. If you had this going on, what, what, Come on, what man. was your attitude about that? That's your yeah, leader. You know, Brian, like, I think Tom Brady put it best when he said, well done is better than well said. And we're at a point now, to Bart's point, where there's so much noise around this Cowboy team and they are so talented that let's put everything down for a year and let's just get it done on the field and let's hold each other accountable. And when you're building your roster this time of the year, you're talking about guys that are force multipliers, like a guy like Bart, that's gonna help other players get to where we wanna go. And sometimes that's putting yourself in a very difficult and uncomfortable position and calling out your teammate about the off-season program, mm -hmm. being in shape, whatever it may be. But instead of talking to the Stephen A. Smiths of the world, let's bring it in-house, let's handle our family business and let do our talking on the field in January. What do you think, Ross? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I think that that does seem to be something that's missing from this Cowboys team is that internal leadership, that internal drive. And, and, and I think that it might manifest itself in different ways inside the building. But to hear Micah Parsons talking like this, I think gives us license to to speculate that it's not that not enough of that stuff is going on inside the building. They had some some defensive leaders kind of age out over the last few years, and it doesn't seem like they've been replaced with guys that can you know, that can that can deliver a kick in the butt. And I do think sometimes that is necessary. They have a culture there that I think is, I mean, they've been very successful, they've been very successful in terms of winning games, right? Like I know they haven't won championships. I know they haven't advanced to the rounds of the playoffs they want to, but they're obviously good, right? So the question is what elevates them beyond good to where they actually want to be? And I do think the, the, the young stars on the team, Micah, we see what he is. Uh, C.D. Lamb is, is kind of a quiet guy right mm -hmm. on the offense. I don't think he's going to be screaming in, in teammates' faces uh, and all I, that. I, so I'm, I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, so here's the thing that I think, did they take it out of context? Because what Micah Parsons was saying on here, if you watch the whole clip, he was saying, D-Law, you can't say – that you're tired going into playoffs, okay? You, you, he said, you don't say that. He said, you certainly don't say that out in public. He said, it's playoffs. It's time. Listen, he said, I look at it as I got four games left. Four games left. I ain't tired. I got four games left. Wild card, divisional, NFC Championship, Super Bowl. That's my season. I ain't tired. He was doing the exact opposite thing that you guys condemned and said that he was doing, that he was basically being lazy. He was not being a leader. He's being a leader and saying, listen, guys, there are no excuses. We go out and we play. He talked about changing the culture in this interview. He said he's going to Jerry Jones and talking to him about the culture, about the players that we need to go out and get to change the culture. You guys come through and say, he's saying that I'm tired. He did not say I'm tired. He did not say I'm tired. He was throwing his teammate under the bus who actually made that claim. So let's at least, if you're going to condemn somebody, at least get the context correct on what was said and what the actual outcome was supposed to be. You guys are making shit up now. You literally are making shit up. And Bart Scott, for you to talk about how Micah Parsons has played. Now, you had a 11-year career. Shout out to you for playing that long for Baltimore and the Jets. But as I look at your numbers there, you got a total of 25 sacks and 538 tackles, solo tackles, okay? You've had a good career. But let's be clear here. Micah Parsons is doing more right now than what you did in your career. So let's slow your roll here right now. I don't know. Did, did, uh, were you with the Ravens when they won that Super Bowl? Or was that after your rookie year? Because I know you didn't play a whole lot your first three years in the league. 
I don't think that she did. But be that as it may, haters are going to hate. All right, good people. I will see you guys tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. Peace out.